there's a few people on this very channel that had to give the A plus certification exam one, two, or even three tries and they eventually pass the exam. They just decided that they weren't gonna give up. And I can't imagine the amount of pain that they went through seeing fail. Just recently failed your CompTIA A plus certification exam, whether it's your core one or your core two. First and foremost, I like to say, I'm sorry about that, but you cannot give up. You cannot beat yourself up because you spent so much money on those textbooks. <laughs> you need to you need to make this work for you. At least that's how I look at it. When I was taking these exams, I refused to accept anything less than a pass. Whether if I was passing on the first time, which is what I did for all of these exams, or if I failed and I had to take it again, I, I was determined to get a pass because some of these books are expensive, especially if you don't have the money to be spending on all these resources. I must have spent upwards of maybe almost $400 <laughs> studying for the A plus certification exams. And I just, I don't know, I just refuse to fail. Keep that in mind. You don't want to give up and let everything that you put into studying for these exams or this exam go to waste. What do you do now? Okay, I don't wanna get too cl cliche here. I don't wanna get too corny, but failure doesn't exist unless you acknowledge failure, unless you admit defeat. If you admit that you failed, that you can't go any further, then that's true. But if you decide that you're gonna keep going, then you didn't fail. So don't let the big black letters of fail on your exam, even though they're not big black letters, but they might seem like big black letters when you look at it and see that you failed the exam. Don't let that deter you from giving it another shot. There's a few people on this very channel that had to give the A plus certification exam one, two, or even three tries and they eventually pass the exam. They just decided that they weren't gonna give up. And I can't imagine the amount of pain that they went through seeing fail, 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 and then the amount of elatement they felt when they saw the pass. That's what you wanna do. You want to not admit defeat. Do not admit defeat. Give yourself a week, maybe two weeks, not too long because you don't wanna start forgetting the material to kind of decompress, watch some movies, eat some ice cream, and then go at it again. I know there's gonna be some drill sergeants telling you, no, you gotta get your ass up immediately and go. But I think that's kind of counterintuitive because if you don't have the go, if you don't have the motivation, and this is the only time that I will admit that motivation is important, then you're not gonna give it another shot. If you're too emotionally distraught, then it's gonna sacrifice your energy but give yourself physical time to just sit back relax watch Netflix get back at it maybe after a week that should be feasible the next thing you want to do is be honest with yourself what are the topics that you ignored and they're usually the ones that were your least favorite for me when I was studying for the CCNA it was IPv6 it was access control list it was port security, things like that. I didn't really find those to be the most exciting. I found more of the routing processes to be exciting. And those are the questions on the exam that I absolutely know that I destroyed. If you have a least favorite topic, that is a huge hint as to where you probably went wrong, where you probably lost the most points. I believe they give you a score report or something like that after you take the exam. I don't know how they're doing it right now, but if they do give you a score report, you can probably see where you did well and where you didn't do so well and that's where you're probably going to really zone in or be able to zone in and determine what you need to focus on the next thing you might want to do is switch up your game plan maybe you were studying too much maybe you were studying too little i know a bad habit that a lot of people have is to study right up to the day of the exam give yourself anywhere between two to three days or maybe one to two days I, I'm, it's different for everybody, but at least give yourself one to two days to relax before you take the exam. Say you've been studying for months on end, you need a break like all of us do. Schedule your break right before the exam. Schedule your exam one to two days before you take the exam because you wanna give your mind, give your synapses a rest. And if you don't, what happens is you end up burning yourself out right before the exam. You end up over cramming your working memory and you won't have access to your working memory as you're taking the exam. So switch your study strategy up. Maybe you need to get some more sleep. Maybe you need to get less sleep. Maybe you need to exercise more. These are things that matter. Maybe you need to switch your diet up. These are things that we often overlook when it comes to 
studying for these exams. They're very intense. So we have to optimize our lives as much as possible. Next, you should probably use better resources. And I think we know if a resource is not for us or if the resource is low quality, it's usually things that you've randomly found on the internet, which I would highly recommend you stay away from. Uh, if you spent a whole heap of money on the books and they're from reputable sources, then it might not be wise to change the resources. You might just, again, try to go back to focusing on changing your strategies and focusing on topics that you know you didn't pay much attention to, that you, you left to the wayside. You maybe paid attention to a lot of the heavier concepts and you left the edges. Those topics that are our least favorite are usually some of the more out there topics Topics, some of the topics that are, you know, a little bit more involved, more detail oriented, and we get lazy and we don't really pay much attention to it. If you know that your resources are dodgy and questionable, I would say get rid of those and invest some money into some good resources, resources that'll actually help you to get a good grasp, a great grasp on the material. Those materials could be things like classes. They could be like physical classes, not the online classes. They could be online courses. If you're not using Professor Messer, you should absolutely use Professor Messer. He has a free course on YouTube, as well as some paid supplementary materials. He has practice exams. He has notes. He has so many different materials that you you can use to cover all of your bases. Get a hold of some good quality materials that can help bolster your score on the exam and it'll, it'll, and it'll take you over the edge. A lot of the times it might just be that you were tired that day, maybe you were stressed. Try to schedule your exam. It's kind of it's kind of weird to even say this, but try to schedule your exam around a time where you have low stress, right? Where you know that it's, it's low stress. Don't really schedule your exam too close to the holidays. Don't schedule your exam too close to like weddings or, you know, anniversaries, birthdays, things of that nature because that's going to weigh too heavily on your mind and it's going to adversely affect your score. Again, I like to emphasize this because many people don't really pay too much attention to this, but you have to manage your mental state when it comes to these exams and your mental state is heavily influenced by the amount of sleep you get, stress, the food that you eat, even the resources that you're using to study for the exam. If you know that you paid good money for resources, you're going to, it, there's going to be this, this psychological component to it where you value the resources enough to give it the respect that it deserves. If you get some free resources, you might not respect the material in the resources or as much as you would for a paid resource. I see this a lot on YouTube. People think that because things are free on YouTube that they're not valuable. But the, the thing with YouTube or any platform that allows for content creators to give information for free is that it's technically not free because the content creators are getting paid on the back end through ad revenue, sponsorships, and things of that nature. So it gives the content creator a way to offer material that would otherwise be paid for free to you. So don't take free material for granted unless, again, unless they're dodgy, unless they're things that you just randomly found on the internet, right? Kind of contradicting myself there. But you have to use ingenuity to know which material is good content and which material is not good content. I give you two examples. Again, Professor Messer's course, free on YouTube. He has a whole playlist for CompTIA A, CompTIA A+, Network+, Security+, and uh, I think he has, I think, yeah, I think those are the only three he has, right? And then if you want to check out CCNA, you want to see what a, a good quality course is, check out Jeremy's IT Lab. I used his course to pass my CCNA, great quality, and it's free. Of course, he has paid versions, on Teachable and Udemy, which come with extra materials and stuff like that. But the meat of the course is free on YouTube. Look at those courses and you can tell what good quality is. So that's all I have for you today. If you like videos like this, click right here and I'll talk to you guys next time. And good luck, don't give up, don't give up.